One thing you need to know is my aunt that passed away is the one who made apple butter. So we'll watch and see how things work out. We think we've got a plan. They're going to cancel this year. Next year, do it at a different home, the, the farm out in the country there, and where's Mark? So just understand that it was really neat because I spoke to her at 8.30, okay? Thursday on night. Thursday night. She wished me a happy birthday a day late, like I did her. And at 12.30, between 12.30 and 2, she went on to be with the Lord. So it was the last thing she told me was, tell everybody I love them. And I said, 10 four. And that was it. So dying grace is pretty cool. But at any rate, it was good to go. We got to speak to a lot of people. Um, we went through all kinds of different. Kathy was going crazy with genealogy. Yes, I was. Yeah. She was grabbing every old face that she saw, <laughs> jerk words and dates out of her head. And but the thing of it is, is over all of it, we did get to talk to individuals one on one about Christ. And then they asked me to speak at the graveside. So I got to do that, a little five minute thing, talking about generational changes, <clears throat> all the different characteristics that they saw in Aunt Divorce. They were all sitting in these seven chairs. I need mean, all the ones behind them as the next generation to know that they're going to have the same pattern that everybody else had. And then my brother, bless his heart, hasn't been up there in 27 years. He went to the graveside and blew his harmonica, Amazing Grace, and tore him up. <laughs> it was great. He did good, and he didn't practice. He's one of those ear guys, you know, where you just hear it, you do it. So he went and bought a harmonica and could do that. So no, he bought two harmonicas. Two harmonicas. One to leave with Sam, my, my, my cousin wanted the one that Rick blew for his mom, and then he kept, he, of course he had to have one for himself. So we did all that, and even to the point of the funeral director stayed for the graveside service. And he said, I never do that. He said, but there's something about this group of people. And I said, well, they know Jesus Christ. And he said, but it was impromptu. I said, I don't have to have a paper to tell you about these folks. I've lived with them for 60 some years. It was easy. And Rick said, you know, why would I not do this? I mean, Grandpa played the squeeze box. Somebody played the juice harp. Somebody played the guitar. Somebody played the banjo. Somebody played the fiddle. I mean, this is normal for my family. And they all were just hugging on each other. And they have scraps like everybody else. But he noticed it was different. I said, most of the ones that you see doing this know Jesus Christ personally. And what he said is very obvious. So it was just really, really a good time for all that were there. Tears, of course, but it was just a good time. It was excellent. And I don't want to do it a whole lot of times. You know. But it was it was good to be able to do it, and I appreciate Donnie just on the drop of a hat, you know, coming in and doing what he did, and he even got to sing. Right? So that's a good thing. You won't hear singing coming out of me. Bobby, did you get to talk to Shirley? Yes, I talked to Shirley yesterday. She's got everything squared away. She goes in Wednesday. It's on the sheet. Goes in Wednesday. To have her knee done, so she probably won't get out till Saturday, right? It's going to the same shooting match you went to. So she'll do that, and then she's got a daughter coming, and then you're going to try to help if, if there's a void somewhere. I, there is a, there's going to be a lot of voids. Okay, so if you've got time on your hands, once we know what the, the program is, they've got a nurse coming in. Yeah, probably, because I'll check on it regular. Okay? I mean, I don't know any other way to do it. So do that, and then pray for Chuck, the, the mechanic. He got his knee work on Friday, so he's gimping around too, so... Just, you don't get any days off, all right? You get them when they flip the lid down on the pine box. All right? Anybody, anything else? Anything else, Mrs. Ed? Okay. Bobby? Yes, sir. That class you were talking about, like the fall? Yes, sir. Uh, starts next Sunday the 13th through November 15th, every Sunday, 530 to 7 in E10 in Crossroads. So, yeah, you're right. Somewhere in here. Thank you. Um, East. I don't just come to this one. They'll probably stick a sign somewhere on the door. There you go. I have, I have no clue. Well, let me go look. Yes. I, I, I only come here because I've been programmed to come here. I have no idea what the door says or what the number is or anything else. Okay. All right. So, at any rate, let me pray and then we'll get started. You are E10.
Oh, I need ten. One of our E9 is up at P9. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for the grace that you extend to us, for, for the way that you take care of your your students, your people, your group, whenever things just don't work out according to our plan, your plans are perfect. That you be with the ones that might hear a message across the street today, Lord, that you would just give the Holy Spirit a freedom to do what He does best, and that's lead them into all truth. That you be with the ones that are here today, Lord, that might have something going on in their lives that might be on that clipboard going around. We put it in your hands, and we take our hands off of it. That you be with the ones, Lord, that are studying your Word today. The Holy Spirit would be permitted to illuminate us and to challenge us with whatever's taught, and that we would put it into a deep place, that we would allow ourselves to root it, to live it, and to show people why we live it. And in doing so, Lord, we give honor and praise to you. And that once again, I pray that you just be with the family up north that I left behind, that you just watch over them. Give them the peace that only you can generate, and give them an opportunity to look for you if the case isn't isn't the way it should be, that somebody would be there to tell them. And for all the other things that you do here, Lord, that we have no clue about, we just thank you for them. In Christ's name, amen. All right, here you go. Almighty Father. Almighty is the best title from every creature, particularly from men, being the father of their spirits, the maker of their bodies, and the continual preserver of both first cause of all things from the Reverend John Fleetwood of 1869. So that would have probably been a stem wider preaching movie. But at any rate, that's the kind of stuff that was going through my head. And this is your verse for the month, Titus 2.10. Google it. Okay. <laughs> Lightning thumbs. <laughs> tells you how to conduct yourself, how to protect yourself, and what you are supposed to be doing as you wander through this world. Read it loud, outside voice. Oh, I pushed, I pushed the wrong T. Ah, oh, Jesus. There's no chance that happens. Titus 2.10 says, oh, it starts in the middle of a sentence. It does. It's the best middle. Okay. Should I start at nine notes? Yeah, you can do that so you have some context. Slaves are to be submissive to their own masters everything. They are to be well pleasing, not argumentative, and then starts ten. Not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. There you go. That means there's some words there you gotta scout up. Pilfering. <laughs> Purloining. Oh the purloined letter. Ooh. Who wrote that one? Somebody fancy did, didn't they? Uh, Am I the only one who read that? Not, not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted. Ah, there you go. So in other words, can, you're going to exhibit somebody's integrity, aren't you? That's the idea. So just in case you wanted to know, I had a good time. I got to, uh, if, if, if everything works right, There you go. I'm a horseback ride. Poor Ford. Yeah, he was having a hard time. Except for the horse that I was on, every five feet the guy wanted to take, bend down and eat something. And with a short rein, about jerked me out of the saddle every time, but it was good. We jumped deer. I got to see deer in the field. So, and my cowboy boots were cowboys. You didn't shoot the deer. It worked well. It was a beautiful morning. That was before they planted the empty horse. It was good. It was wonderful. Bob, so, now tell where you did that. Where did I did that? Where you went from Scotland. The alpaca farm. <laughs> but be careful. It's like in the Latin. They spit. <laughs> this is in Warriors Mark, Pennsylvania. Where's that at? Uh, State College. Yeah. Altoona. Yeah. Betwixt. It's the, it's the countryside between the two. Well, I wouldn't. Penn, Penn State is, State College is gobble up every living thing in town. But it was just beautiful. And it was a foggy morning, 6.30 in the morning. Exceedingly good. That wasn't so, 
exceedingly good. All right. Where were we at now? Now we've done all that reminiscing. Burning daylight. All right. Eyeballs on. How far did we get before, boss? Page 17, we got to the top. Okay. All right. <laughs> Should I, Yeah, you had read this, but then you asked us to read the verses. Yes. Did somebody read the verses underneath there? The Should I, Dasis stuff? Um, this is, if, if one thing you need to get out of this, this is a portion of you that is instituted by salvation. This is the incoming Holy Spirit opening up chunks of your mind that did not have a function before other than to observe the world. Okay? You would observe it in world terms. Now you're observing it in Holy Spirit terms. And in doing so, you have the ability to do these things, which is comprehend, reason out. But you're not reasoning out with man's wisdom. You're now reasoning out with God's wisdom. Okay? So if, if you're, you're in a condition where you say, well, I need to get upset about this, and then you run it through the system that the Lord has, and that's not the outcome that you come with, you break away from what you would have done, and now you do something entirely different. It is intrinsically different from what you would normally do in the world. That's what sets you apart from everybody else functioning in this world. Okay? That's what I, I, I got a chance to tell them up there. And that's... I am finding more and more when I go to different places that are preaching, they are preaching soft gospel if that makes sense. And I, I, I don't understand, well, like probably do, they probably want to be liked. But, but at the same time, when, I, when you get somebody one-on-one -on -one that's heard soft gospel and you ask them a few questions, there's a big question mark over their head and they start coming up with, what did he really mean? And then if, you, if you've got a basis of knowledge, you can help that individual get past that. Okay? And that's, pretty much what you're going to be able to do. Your ability to perceive, your ability to discern is going to be directly affected by how much you listen to the Holy Spirit. When it tells you in Revelation again and again and again, those that have ears, you know and I know from the study, that is not physical ears. That is spiritual perception. Your ability to see something from God's standpoint. And your ability to do that is going to totally influence your life if you do it that way. And if that influence is observed by others, they're going to realize that you've got this kind of stuff. You've got that kind of knowledge in your head. You're depending on somebody else at a, at a higher level that's, con that's controlling what you're doing. And that's why they do that. The ability to understand concepts and see relationships between them. Why do I depend on the Holy Spirit? It seems like it's rather encumbersome to me at times. Why? Because sometimes I have to wait for an answer. Sometimes I have to accrue information before I can make a decent response to a question. Okay? But understand something. When you do do that, all you're doing is walking through the library. And you're looking for the right book and the right passage and the right institution and the right fit so that when you answer the question, there is no quibble room. You've answered the question. That individual can take something with them and it is going to be beneficial. You know what I knew when you do that, it tells you, what do you mean when it, when it, when it says the, the word of the Lord never returns void? Do you understand what that means? There is absolutely no confusion involved in it. Now, understanding is not is, is a different program. Misunderstanding is a bad program, but it doesn't do that. It, you cannot misunderstand it if it's presented correctly, and that's that's what Paul has to do because now he's got Romans that have come up with the idea after going to, to Jerusalem to have a church, and they have to have the church. They have to have groundwork for the church, and the church is it, when it's young. New anything like that. It's got to have good information to start with. If it does not, 
it gets off on some tangent somewhere and then it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And what it's supposed to do is educate you to walk in that world. That's the job of the church. To lift others up. Why do you care about whether Shirley has any needs or not? The world doesn't have that problem. They send somebody, they pay for somebody, they send, that's not what it's said to do. Okay? Because you have a different spirit. That's what's concerned about the people around you. That's why you pray for your kids. That's why you pray for co-workers. Because you're put together different than them. Now, and it says here, in the next part of this, to the, of the faith, oh, and we almost forgot. I've been gone a week and I almost forgot. Somebody read the first five verses of that, would you? Of Romans? I apologize. See what happens? You have to retrain me if I'm gone a week. Yeah. Real loud, outside voice, holler, megaphone type. That way we've got the verses in our head. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, that he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Spirit, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace, and apostleship or obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Faith. That to you is doctrine, by the way. Faith is not something out there that you can touch, but it's something that you can put in your head. Because when you put doctrine in your head, it's going to make you think differently. When you think differently, thinking on God's terms, you're thinking in faith terms, because that's not something that's natural. <laughs> right? And that's why they put it like that. And here's the deal. Among all the nations, common grace. So what does it mean? It means the Holy Spirit's out there doing something everywhere, worldwide, at all times. Always presenting the Gospel at different places, in different fashions, different venues. And there are people out there that are prone to listen. That's all there is to it. And when you find one that is prone to listen, they will listen. And when the, the scales are removed for that instant, just that quick, then the individual says, oh, there's something that I've been searching for. I didn't know what I was searching for, but I found it. And as I find it, then the doors are open that way. And when they step into Christ, everything changes. But that does not stop the fact that there are oodles of people out there that need to hear the Gospel. And it is incumbent upon you to present the Gospel. You're going to present the gospel the best way you know how in word. How many of you like to preach to people? Stand there and just, you know, you're going to hell. <laughs> That's not how you do it. How do you do it? Conduct yourself accordingly. Once again, it tells you it's out there. Holy Spirit will show you how to do it. And you're going to do it in your actions more than anything. All right. What if somebody wrongs you? What do you do? What do you do? Forgive them. All right. Now how do you forgive them? Pray for them. Anything else? Love them. How do you? That's tough. Okay. That's one of your gates. Understand that is one of your gates. If you can't impersonally love somebody, even if you don't know them and you don't like them. You're stunting your growth. How many of you know that when you pull certain plants out of the ground and put them back in the ground, they grow better? A lot of people don't, they don't realize that. I have two oak trees in my backyard that started out like this. One of them I got mad at one day because it wasn't doing anything. All the other guys were participating in the program. Not this one. He was turned out brown leaves. I jerked him out of the ground, dug a new hole, shoved him back in the ground. Now he's the biggest guy in town. <laughs> okay. Now, it might have been the conversation I had that you're going to be a firewood if you don't do something, but I'm not sure. But the thing about this is with other individuals that you come across, 
You don't know what program it's going to take for you to be beneficial to the Holy Spirit. And believe me, you are. Because the Holy Spirit will say, you know, I've been watching. I've been watching her at work. And you know something about her? She doesn't seem to get unraveled at certain things that other people get unraveled at. She doesn't know she's being watched. She has no clue. But something's happened for that individual to pick out somebody. Do you realize who picked you out? The Holy Spirit said, I've got one over here that you can look at. And you're going to do it. Why? People that are looking for something, anybody, they're grasping at straws. Okay? It's just that's the way it is. You know how many times I explained dying grace to my family over the past three or four days? They had no clue. But they know what you know what the common thread is? That's the way I want to go. <clears throat> and I said, well, you have to understand, you have to have the information beforehand to go like that. To close your eyes and open them in heaven. And that's, I mean, these are people that some of my family, they drink, okay? Beer, mostly. But they're the kind that it's no to them, that's like you and I drink at Mountain Dew. And they don't always remember what a next day brings. But they do get sobered up quickly when something like this happens. And when you have the information for them, and for me to explain dying grace to them, I said, you realize that the Lord has saints that he will not have a hard time transferring to heaven? I said, you know who she's seeing up there now? Her husband. Her brother. Her sister that they didn't even ever know. And I said, do you understand that? Do you want any of that? And some of them, they don't know how to answer you at first. So all you do is plant seeds. And that's what they're saying here. All the nations are being seeded. Why, do they, why did Christ, when He came off the... Remember when He had the lady at the well and He said everybody in town, there was a bunch of people coming off the, off the mountain and He saw, what did He say? He lifted His eyes and said, the fields are... Right, right, right. right unto harvest. harvest. Why did he say that? He wasn't saying, what, what was he saying? Let's put it that way. What was he saying? A lot of opportunities out there. Tons. Tons. And he said, he knew all those people. The only reason they were following him is because he gave them groceries. That's the only reason. But he said, that's not why they'll end up being here. And that's what you and I are doing. That's what these people did with all of this stuff. And when it says for, among all the nations, gospel is universal. And that's what they're talking about. And it says, on behalf, why is the gospel everywhere? Because Christ did His cross work. That's why the gospel is offered everywhere. Okay? For the sake of His person, His reputation, His name. That's why it's offered to everybody. Why? Because there are no caveats when he said, all you have to do is believe on me. He gave no caveats whatsoever. And that is a universal option. Alright? And it says our submission, obedience, willingness to be a to be a bond slave. That's the scary part for people until they get there. Okay? That's the fun part. You know, we were up home. There's a place up home in Tyrone that sells Gardner's candy. It's high class candy. At least for Hicks, it is. Okay. But we found that Jim, who married Gail, whose mom died, his sister works for Gardner's. Do you know what that means? Discount. I have a connection to Gardner's. 50% off non Pharrell's. Chocolate bark. Ooh. And what were you? Peanut butter melt away. Peanut butter melt away. Yes. So, I mean, you know, I already died and went to heaven. So it's not a problem. Do you understand that that was a source of conversation with a person? And they said, you're up here for divorces. I said, yeah. I said, I sent another saint to be with Jesus Christ. And they go, I guess you did, didn't you? And there was nobody that did not have that opinion of her. 
It was just really fun. But I got candy out of it too. So I mean, how could that be bad? All right? But here's the deal. And it says on behalf of the name in Philippians 2, 9 and 10, a name which is above every name. That's the verse that includes that. Understand, that's the that's the uh, get out of jail free card. That's your card for getting into places that you couldn't out normally get into. That is a card to get you anything you need to have as far as saints go. It's how you know what's on your package when you step into Christ. That's the name you invoke. Everybody knows the name. Lost people know the name. Saved people know the name. All right? And it talks about of Him, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the forgiver of sins. Grace giver is what they call Him in Isaiah. Okay? That's what you and I live for. That's one of the things that I find in a lot of people, they, they like to hang on to a little nibbit of the law. And if you hang on to a little bit of the law, then you're kind of secure because that's something I can touch. But He told you you can't do that. A Christian is, or in, is under no manner of law. You don't have that on your on your chart. You're permitted to do anything in Christ. You're going to weigh it what? Against Christ. That's how you decide whether you want to do something or not. Whether or not it's beneficial to you doesn't mean anything. Whether it's beneficial to the Lord, totally in the program. That's what they're talking about here. Statement. Obedience to doctrine. Alright? Here's the problem that you have setting being set up. A set of people want doctrine without obedience. Okay? Now they call some of these people, they call these people a fundamental. Which way we need to go? One way or the other? The Kathy. Anybody need this? Just to Kathy? Okay. Pass it back to her. Fundamentalist charlatans. What are we talking about? There are a lot of people out there that will tell you you have to have something in along with your faith. Okay? Um, one of the ones they use a lot is tithing. They try to hook it to Malachi in a heartbeat. They'll drop everything and say, you know, if you don't bring it to the storehouse, yeah, you're done. That's not what the book says. Okay? Matter of fact, the book that you pay attention to, the New Testament, says, as a matter of fact, if you have a bad attitude, keep your flipping money. I don't need it. Is that the penance comes from the Catholic Oh, yes. That's part of it. Yeah, they used that as a... Oh, that was a... I told you... Well, when we did the history thing, you realize that they told the Crusaders? They used that as a real tool back then. Penance. And if, if they told the, 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 anybody that would walk to the Crusades that if you went off to the Crusades and fought for what you're fighting for, what we tell you to fight for, you get a free pass into heaven. That's how they got a lot of fighters. Okay, and what was penance? They did that because if you couldn't meet the criteria on your own, we'll buy it for you. Okay? Muslims had this similar kind of thing. You know, you <laughs> fight for God. That's exactly you know, right. Infidels and you yeah. got what and, is it, and you, two virgins. Yeah, and you realize that if you study that out, you know what? That's not really the term. That's the, old, the new term is virgins. You know what the old term was? Grapes. White grapes. I get 72 white grapes. I think I got ripped off. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you, that's what, if you just follow it back far enough, it started out as white grapes. Why? Because that was something that was cherished at a particular time of Muhammad when he was doing his thing. <clears throat> he was a grove guy. And everybody wanted his grapes for wine and stuff. So what would happen? Well, if you do what I tell you to do, I'll give you a handful of grapes. <clears throat> White grapes, because they must have been good. But here we go. You know, man gets a little bit, and there's nobody going to go blow up a plane for 72 grapes. <laughs> okay? Now, if they're just a shot in a little crack, that you might get 72 virgins. Okay? You might be able to buy into it just a little bit better. Probably eight years old. So. <laughs> yeah. You know? But I'm just saying. So that's why I say it really helps you to. That's what you were talking about in Jewish history. Learn the history. It'll give you tremendous insight as to what you're wrestling with now because a lot of people, they bring that with them into their thought processes. Okay? How many of you realize why we fought the revolution? Yeah. 
Why are we fighting? Tyranny and oppression from the mother. Partially. Partially. Not represented. For religious. There you go. Then nobody's listening to us in England. They were doing stuff in the House of Commons and all that that just it was totally out of context from what was going on here. And then they sent people over to tell us what they could do with it. And then we told them what they could do with that. <laughs> okay? So it really, you know, it, the tyranny was part of it, but part of it was just somebody just not listening. Same thing. When you don't listen to Christ, what happens to you? You get all out there and you start getting different stories, and that's what they're talking about. Here. That's why they put it this way. And when it talks about this, it's said of people who want obedience without doctrine. These are modern seducers. That means you can do this, this, and this, and I made it up. But if you listen to me, you'll get something out of it. Okay? Um, I'm trying to think of the best one. Did anybody ever... You remember the thing... No... Well, Kathy's gone. I could probably do it, but I get yelled at. Never mind. I won't go there. All right. Would, you that, could just... would that be something like the prayer of Jabez? Part of it. Part, yeah, you part of it was prayer of Jabez. Yeah. It really right. And then if you pay attention to that, the next time he wrote, he did something else. The next time he wrote is everybody has an angel that's watching over you. Well, that's very possible. And I mean, sometimes it might take more than one. But Wilkinson kind of got off the beaten path after he did his first book. I'm just saying, pay attention to it. All right? Here it is. An only bona fide system for learning doctrine is faith, which is what we did before, which means learning by accepting the authority of the criterion or the doctrine. All right? This is where we did all of this variable stuff. This is this is Lois's neighborhood, okay? Differentials and all that kind of stuff. The re reality of unseen, the way of faith is described in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is a non-meritorious system of thinking. It is inherent. And, and the reason I'm, no, 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 I'm doing this for a reason. Hang on, hang on. This is where everybody gets messed up when they start. I, no, you're fine. You just stay where you're at. I'm doing something, I'm backing up for a reason. Everybody's got different ways of learning, all right? If you're a learner from one system, and you need to have proof, okay? You're going to get frustrated. All right? You stack up a bunch of stuff and say, here's what's supposed to happen. It doesn't happen. When this faith stuff that, we're, that I've got here, understand it. When she puts numbers down, she knows what the numbers are going to do. Okay? That is imperative most of the time. Well, there's... Well, there's always... There's, there's always boo -boo. Yes, yeah. there's always boo-boos. Okay? But with faith, when you apply it correctly to all of these things that we're talking about here, Christ said, I came so that you have a program that is perfect. You don't have to worry about the numbers. You don't have to worry about anything else. Just do exactly as that book says. And when it talks about it, it when, whenever somebody's putting doctrine together, you need to know what they're doing. You need to know whether how they're thinking. You need to know whether they have faith involved or whether they've got a bunch of little pinpoints along the way that says, I'm accruing information. They're trying to be rational about it. You need to know that. And that's why this stuff is here. That's why he said that it's out there, the Holy Spirit's out there doing what he's doing because you need everybody needs to know what faith is. Alright? Now, when you flip over to 18, remember, different ways. Rational, faith. Formulated, faith. Alright? Doctrine and doing, which is obedience, are our two parts of salt. It's a good example. Salt is what is Mark? What is what's the verse in Mark that says salt is good? Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount. Five, five, five. Five something? Okay. Okay. That, that's that's my verse. Okay. You have to have salt on everything. It's composed of two poisons. Chlorine and sodium. Did you know that every time you shook your shaker? <laughs> Understand something. But what does faith tell you? The Lord runs this show, and it's something that He designed. Why did He design it? What did He use it for? What did they do with roofing? You know what they put on the roof? Salt. Why did they put salt? Because as it got damp, 
and absorb moisture. It became a surface that was slick and it kept the water from coming through. See all this kind of fun stuff? Yahoo! Alright? But each on separate will cause you to die. But combined properly, you have sodium chloride, common table salt, which is to enhance the flavor of your food. And what does he call you? Salt. 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 Why does he call you salt? Have you ever got salt in a wound? What does that do to you? It'll cleanse. I mean, it's a preservative. Yeah, it is. Exactly. And do you realize that he used those terms for you intentionally? What am I doing if I tell somebody about Jesus Christ? I've just preserved them. What do I do if I tell you that you're doing something outside the box and that Jesus Christ doesn't really want you there? I've just done what? Cleanse you. Help you get back on the path. That's what you have to understand about this stuff. So what does he do? He takes some two programs that can kill you, puts them in and says, you're going to be that program. You're going to be solved. Okay? And here's the deal. That, be careful then not to seek religious life without surrendering to the great doctrines of revealed truth. That's all he's trying to tell you to do. Alright? <coughs> Excuse me. Also, be careful not to hold on to great truths of orthodoxy without surrendering our bodies to living sacrifice, fully acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable and our spiritual service. Now, what does that mean? What's he talking about? Why is he going through all of that? Anybody? Don't surrender just to surrender. Surrender to know. I don't surrender with... How many of you are good employees? Why? Continuation of the employment status. <laughs> Fear. No. No, really. Just out, I mean, and we're talking Christians here. Why are you a good why are you a good individual on that front? Well, I'll set the example. You want to be an example. You work under God. What I do I feel is a continuation. A call. Yeah. Yes. Is that not cool? Now why would you be Excited about that. Because I don't have to satisfy that group. If I satisfy the Father which is in heaven, and He gave me this from the beginning of time to do what I'm doing, what have I just done? I've been an obedient slave. I've been something that's marked. I am definitely salt because that is not going to be a job in the public school system that is going to uh, motivate your Christianity to the outside. You can't because they put so many constraints on them. But that does not change what goes on up here. You know this prayer thing where you took prayer out of school? You didn't take any prayer out of school. I can pray any day God's thinking time I want to lift a prayer and there's not a dead gun thing they can do about it. Any more than on the job site. I pray for every job site I go to. Okay? Now who's going to stop that? Nobody. <laughs> You see where they pick their fights incorrectly. Why? Because they go with emotion. Granted, how many of you in here were in school when they read the Bible every day? Okay? And look how twisted I am. Okay? We pray every day in school to start the day. And it did. It was fine. But it didn't change. I mean, I raised my kids how I want to raise my kids. They didn't have that. They know Christ. You understand? I'm on a different program than everybody else. You're on a different program than everybody else. She's on, all of you, you're on a program that precludes anybody from messing you up. You don't have to respond to it, and that's what they're talking about here. Now, obedience to doctrine, not ceremonies of human religion. Okay? How many of you think singing is wonderful? Donnie does. You do. You do. Now, what makes you think that? The Bible tells you to sing and give praises to the Lord. They have choirs of heavenly angels. Okay, there you go. Okay, all right. But when it comes to spiritual stuff, do you know what it really tells you? What does it tell you? And, and I'm not, this is, I love music just like anybody else. 
Okay. As long as we don't have to sleep. Okay. What does it tell you? You need to worship in spirit and truth. Truth. And it also tells you to raise hymns, sing hymns, and, and all that kind of stuff in your heart. Right. Now, natural outcropping of somebody that has that gift is once it's in your heart, what do you do with it? You ship it out so that other people that don't have that can enjoy it. Okay? But then there's whole ministries that are based on singing. Which is fine. But understand, it's telling you here, stick with the original doctrine and then watch the outcroppings of it. If I'm singing songs in my heart, you know what's going to be a natural outcropping of that? I'm going to have a pleasant attitude when I'm functioning in the world. Okay? Now, if I'm listening to ACDC or Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath or all that kind of stuff, it could just change it just a little bit. Or some of the rap stuff. But if I'm listening to songs that have been put in my head by time and by position and by circumstances, my character changes. Okay? That's what they're saying. Doctrine is what changes you. That's what they're concerned about. All right? Term religion, not a binding, is in the sense of religious duties. Root comes from the verb to wail or to frighten. Now, is that not nice? Is religion supposed to frighten you? Please say yes, because you're not in a religion. You're in a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that has absolutely nothing to do with religion. It has to do with your life in the Son of God. Nothing else. All the trappings that go with it are not part of the program. They might be served sometimes. They might be beneficial sometimes. But understand where you are and who you are. And understand you're a Christian first and everything else second. Okay? Understand this. You're a Christian first. You're a husband second. You're a father third. You see where this is going? Okay? And I, I just want you to understand that the world sometimes changes what the book says. Don't listen to it. What did he generate first on planet Earth? Marriage or the church? Marriage. Does that tell you anything about what the guy put together? <coughs> Please understand that. Don't get them out of cycle. Alright? Alright, our faith is not what we do for God, but what God has done for us. This is occupation with Christ. A term that you need to tattoo on the back of your hand. Alright? And that's the deal. He permeates us. That's, the, that's, that's what he wants about all of it. All right? Now, verse 6. Where are we at? This step over here. All right? Let's talk about among whom are also ye called of Jesus Christ. Now, what are we talking about? He's talking about the guys in Romans. People in Rome have been called. And that talks about young believers who started the church. You were called not by man. You were called by the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit got you at Pentecost. And when you went back, you started putting this thing together. And you put it together from the grassroots up, everybody believing the same thing. Everybody having a focus, which was Jesus Christ and what you had just seen at Pentecost. And that's what they're talking about. And they are, which is present tense. This is not something that's waning. This is not a flash in the pan. It is going on all the time. Also, ye, you are, okay, a body of believers called into union with Christ. An amalgamation comes with a strong source system of authority. Called. You were called to Christ. What does it say? No man cometh to the Father but by me, except the Father call. Okay? That calling part, that's the part the world doesn't get. That's why they don't understand you. Anybody work with dog whistles? Looks like everybody does. Okay. <laughs> what do you blow it? Do you hear it? But who does hear it? Why? It's on the frequency of their ears. It's on the frequency of their ears. Okay? So, when the Holy Spirit goes... And all of your little ears go like this. What happens to you? You respond to it. Okay? 
That's what they're talking about with call. That's how you can be selective. When you read through John and it talks about being in the sheep, in the sheep area, the sheep gate, and it talks about when I go in there and when you go into the sheep area, it's a little narrow place, about yay big, that the guy could go like this through it, but the sheep can't get through because they're not that smart. They can't go it up on their toes and go through the hole. So here's the deal. It says when I get in there and everybody puts their sheep in a common place when you go to these different programs over there. But if he goes in and he calls, blows his Jesus whistle, the ones that recognize his voice are the ones that come with him. Okay? That is imperative. Now how do I know and then you and I have to know whether or not we got some bogus sheep in the group. How do you know that? They won't follow all the time. But I tell you one thing, please understand something. When it talks about wheat and tares, it's talking about sheep and sheep. It's not my job to tell whether, I don't know whether Al's really called. We have no clue. I have some good indications. But then I, I'm sorry. I talked to Cindy and those, it wasn't as good as I thought. <laughs> you understand? That's not for me to do. What do I do? I go and I say, okay, now Holy Spirit, you let me know if I'm hearing the right whistle. And what happens? Over a period of time, what, what becomes evident? The ones that are hearing, you can spot them. It's not hard to spot them. Okay? How many of you have up and down personalities? Anybody here on medication or anything? Okay. I can't blame it on that. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. As a Christian, one thing you might be this way, but as, as in Christ, how are you going to be? You're going to be a whole... You're gonna, I'm going to see the same owl every time I see an owl. Cindy may not, but Cindy has a longer vantage point. She knows that with the dips, there's highs. And, but what do I see? I see the one that's in Christ. Why? Because that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for the ups and downs. I'm looking for Christ. And over the long haul. You know, you don't get up early and run to Publix to gather up groceries for somebody you don't know on your own steam. I'm sorry. You don't. He hasn't called me to do that. All right? And then once again, he called me to something else. You're not going to stay up to 2 or 3 and 4 in the morning putting a lesson together. Why? Because I feel that's just as important as his groceries. Why? Because the Holy Spirit said, this is where I'm using you. You're my slave. Do what I tell you to do. And that's the program that's going on. That's exactly how it's going on. And that's why he says, well, all of these things being called, you don't know what you're called to. You need to find out what you're called to so you're functioning a whole lot. You're a lot happier functioner in your call position than a position you think you like. Okay. That's all there is to it. Yes, ma'am. Part of the, the verse that says work out your salvation with fear and trembling uh -huh. isn't really salvation. That's God's job. That's not anything we do. Correct. It has to do with what is our calling in Christ. And we're trying to figure that out and, and do what He wants us to do. Correct. And that's what we're trying to work There out. you go. And that's what you guys, and you're doing it whether you, this is one of those things that just kind of happens because you can't hang out with Jesus and not be inundated with it. Something is going to pique your interest at somewhere along the, the Christ line. And when it does, what are you going to do with it? You're going to take it in. You're going to use it. You're going to have it. You're going to want it. Okay? That's what it's all about. And here it talks about it. And you're called to what? Jesus Christ. So that means you're called into something. Alright? That's where you're going to be. And that's what it's talking about here. Now you look down below. If you look at that little deal, I put below the word, that Tansy put below the, no, Allie put below the word invitation. It's, it's effectual calling of God to those who listen. Okay? What's an effectual calling? One of the worst. One of the worst. One that you respond to. When I, tell my, when I whistle like a Bob White in the store and all my kids would sit down throughout the store, that's an effectual calling. Okay? I'm, well, I'm just saying you work out a system, and he has a system. And the effectual calling makes you respond, and that's what they're talking about here. And that's why, and what you do is, how many of you had a clue at all 
about what you were getting into when you came into Christ. I was 12. Okay? I was looking at, I didn't want to burn forever. That was enough. Okay? But my thing is, I had no clue what He would expect of me in Him. Had I known, you have to know, I was called to the heavy choice. It just depending on where the timeline you decided to listen because the calling doesn't work. Okay? If, you, if, you're, if you're marked up, you're marked up. That's just... But here's the deal. When it talks about this, it's just your position. It talks about adjustment to the justice of God, which is what we've done. We've gone over it again and again. This is you talking holiness and, and justice and righteousness and integrity. All those things become part of your life, and that's what we're doing with it. And over here where it talks about Christ, here's the term that they use throughout the Bible at different times for royalty. Complete us. Divine royalty, son of God, Jewish royalty, Solomon and Nathan, son of David, battle, field royalty, cross work, seated next to God, King of kings, Lord of lords, Curios. These are the terms you see through the Bible. Now you know that if you see that term, this is what it means. Okay? The Jews are looking for what? They're looking for Jewish royalty. What are we looking for? I'm looking for the King of kings and Lord of lords. <coughs> That's all I'm looking for. Every time I look in the sky, that's what I want to see. Okay? That's the job. Nothing to it. All right? I already know He's divine. How do I know? And nobody goes through what that man goes through and still has a smile on his face. And He did. He came back. He said, I'm coming back for you. You're going to know me. When I snag you, you're going to know you've been snagged because your shoes are going to be right here, playing on the earth. Boom. Oh, Gone. All right? That's what you're talking about. Now, with all of this other stuff, are we about done, Miss Seth? I better. Well, let me stop right there. This is your position in Christ because it's it's kind of kind of gives you a, a basis for what what comes up after that. Because the fact that these guys are now in Christ in Rome, they are in Christ, but they are uneducated in Christ. They need to have fertilizer put on them. Paul's going to put the fertilizer on. He said, I want you guys to grow. I want you guys to be secure. You are really in a dangerous place, but I'm going to secure your danger zone by giving you an education that will be unmovable. And it really was. It became really a, a, a good center for everything when the world changed in a, in a few more years down the road. So, all right. Okay. Anything else? You got some stuff back there, Miss Hank? Um, I put Steve, Chris, Myra, Lisa, Jennifer, Melissa, Pam, Ralph, and Ken all on the on the cancer wrestling match. Church staff and service, unspoken uh, ones, just people that are in your mind, in my mind, that you know they don't want you to say their name, but they do ever love to track you down for a prayer. Um, I put Shirley on here, I put Chuck on here, I put the Deal family on here who lost my aunt. I, give me a favor, I need you take care of three or three names for sure. Gail, Patty. I put Aunt Sis on here, but really, you can put uh, Chris because they were the ones that were closest to her, and they were the ones that went by the house all the time, and they were the ones that are going to have the biggest boy for a little while. So just keep them. You can take this with your whatever. Okay. Um, police and military and son. Yeah. Please pray for Joy's health. She's wrestling with stuff. Tom and Eve, we pray for the Lord's will regarding Delaware. Anna went to heaven one year ago. Wow, that love that fast. I'm sorry, Sunshine. Memories are memories. Anna's mission will be presented to the church mission committee next Sunday by Jennifer, Juliet, and me, praying for a close relationship with Innovation Church at UCF. Trying to keep college kids, give them a place to go when they go to college instead of hunting and pecking and sliding out and getting out of the habit. Okay? Keep it in prayer. Steve, Joanna, shoulder. <clears throat> Ask to heal quickly. <laughs> All right. She had surgery last Thursday, so she won't be going south with the geese. Dad, multiple tests to help determine his health. Looking for answers. I'll, I'll way ahead. Yeah, me 
Birmingham. Kim Morrell, health issues, and Lynn Mullinax, recovering from cancer. There you go. We'll keep chasing it. Okay, you home? All those things are what are floating to the surface right now, but do me a favor when you're praying. If there's anything else that comes to your mind, swing it in the mix. Okay. Um, I have a question. Somebody was asking me if you have to pay to get on the a Yahoo site or a, how do you watch the Sunday school lesson? YouTube. YouTube. Do you have to be? Do you have to pay to have you? Yeah. Shirley was trying to figure out she couldn't get on and said she had to pay, and I said you probably went somewhere else. Yeah, yeah uh, just go to the Sunday school <coughs> website. That's on the Sunday school videos, and then click a link in it. Okay. All right. Out. I'll tell her that because she not that she's, she's going to be busy for a little bit, but. I just, some, she just told me that, and I said, yeah, you're asking the wrong guy. So. Unless Allie put something in there to start charging them. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, whatever. So, but anyway, let's pray, and I'll turn to lose. Fresh Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for your exceedingly gracious <clears throat> blessing of sending us a Holy Spirit that can allow us to plow through your book tear it apart a little bit of the summary so that we have beneficial information so that as the world confronts us we have a peace about it and we don't have to get all bent out of shape like everybody else we realize we're, you're totally in control and we just thank you for that be with the ones that leave here today Lord give them a good week in you and bring them back here safely next week for the ones that aren't here Lord we lift them to you whether it be medical or situational we don't know that's, that's, that's in your yard and I need to take care of. Just thank you for all that you do for us every day in Christ's name.